what does an electric car, wind turbines, smartphones and fighter jets all have in common? Deep inside each of them is a tiny powerful component which the whole world is fighting for. A component that China has dominated for almost decades until now. What's up future officers? My name is Tejas and I welcome you all to this new episode of iLead. In a move that could reshape the global tech supply chains, the union cabinet has just approved a rupees 7,280 crore scheme to make India as a manufacturing hub for rare earth permanent magnets. Now, who is the nodal ministry to this, you might ask? See, the nodal ministry to this would come under Ministry of Mines. Even though there will be a little bit of oversight from the Department of Atomic Energy and Niti Aayog. So, what does this mean? And why should we care? Let's break it down. But first things first, what are we even talking about here? Rare earth permanent magnets are like this super strong neodymium magnets that are not your average fridge magnets. They are the powerhouse behind modern technology. To cite a few examples, electric vehicles. They are critical for high efficiency motors that power the electric vehicles. Another example, second example, green energy. They are essential for the generators of wind turbines. Example 3, your smartphones. They are in your phones, speakers and vibration motors. Example number 4, defense. They are crucial systems in your missiles, radar systems and even satellites. Essentially, no modern technology can run without them. And for the longest time, China has controlled over 90% of its production. So the entire global supply chain was dependent on China until now. So what exactly has the government approved? Let's take a look. The scheme is officially called the PLI scheme for manufacturing of advanced rare earth magnets. All of this is fine, but what would be the key targets here. The key target number one is to establish 6000 MTPA of million tons per annum of integrated REPM manufacturing capacity. Target number two is to create five beneficiaries via global competitive bidding each of up to 1200 million tons per annum. Target number three is to build India's First, complete REPM value chain. Let's look at the key goals. Number one, boost domestic manufacturing. The primary aim is to create a strong domestic ecosystem for this magnet production. We usually mine rare earths, but what happens? We usually export it to some foreign country and then we purchase that finished product at a very high cost. This particular scheme aims to flip that script. Point number two, the Key target areas. The government is specifically targeting five high growth target areas. Number one, electric vehicles, wind energy, consumer electronics, defense and medical devices. Point number three, financial incentives. The 7,280 crores will be given out as PLI investments, PLI incentives over a period of eight years to companies that set up manufacturing plants here. This almost covers about 20 to 30 percent of the project cost. Overall, making this a very attractive proposition. Rupees 6,450 crore of sales link incentive is to be given for five years. So this would be based on the actual magnet sales, encouraging high quality production and global competitiveness. Another very important point here is rupees 750 crores is to be given for capital subsidy for this plant setup. Now, this could include oxide to metal conversion, alloying and sintering technologies. Now, this time duration for this entire scheme would be up to a period of seven years, which is enough time for infrastructure creation, capacity building and sustained production. In all of this, very important thing to note is that a two-year gestation period would be given 
to create all these facilities. Sir, what facilities you might ask? See, to stabilize rare earth processing lines, install metallurgical systems and build these integrated plants. Now, you shouldn't just see this as an industrial policy. This is a geostrategic masterstroke. Here's why. Point number one, reducing China's dependence. The world is desperately searching for alternatives to China, especially for its critical minerals. By building its capacity, India is slowly positioning itself as a reliable, democratic alternative in the global supply chain. Point number two is, we are making the step for boosting our MSMEs. So there'll be a major boost for all the micro, small, medium enterprises in the chemical, metallurgy and automobile sectors. Thereby, it will have a ripple effect or what we call as multiplier effect in the economy. Point number four is that it will have this synergetic effect with so many other sectors as well. Like for example, there is fame scheme so basically, FAME scheme is to give a boost to the EVs, that is electric vehicles. Then there is green hydrogen scheme. So basically, when this scheme starts giving impetus to all other schemes, every other scheme will also develop. Of course, this path isn't so easy. Setting up a full-scale rare earth supply chain is very complex and technologically intensive. It requires significant investment in R&D and infrastructure. The success of this is highly dependent on how efficiently incentives are distributed and whether global and domestic players are confident enough to invest heavily. So to sum it up, India is making rupees 7,280 crore bet to break China's stranglehold in this critical mineral setup. This is an example of classic long-term strategic investment. What do you guys think? Will this be a game changer for India or are the challenges too big? Let me know in the comment section below. If you found this breakdown helpful, smash that like button and subscribe for more such clear explanations. Thanks for watching. This is Tejas signing off. I'll see you all in the next one.